Hi, we'll discuss the questions of surgery in this CBT 2 for FMG exam. There are 30 questions of surgery. So the first question, 30-year-old male undergoes right superficial parotidectomy. Eight months later, he complains of flushing and sweating in the face on eating. So this is a very classical phrase syndrome. Question is diagnosed with phrase and botulinum toxin was injected. Misdirected re-enervation of which nerve is responsible for this syndrome? Phrase syndrome is because of uh, injury to the auriculotemporal nerve. Facial nerve injury can lead to deviation of the face, inability to close the eyes, watering from the eyes. Greater auricular nerve is, uh, when injury occurs, there will be loss of sensation from this uh, area, from the angle of mandible, from that area, there will be loss of sensation. Trigeminal nerve does not get injured in the in, in, in this uh, parotid surgery. Okay, so this is a classical auriculotemporal nerve injury. Which of the is the commonest tracheoesophageal fistula? See congenital tracheoesophageal fistula, there are basically five types. Okay, there are five types of congenital tracheoesophageal fistula. Proximal is Type B, okay, there are four are written. One is type A, that is pure esophageal atresia. Pure esophageal atresia. There is no tracheoesophageal fistula as such in this. So, out of this, distal fistula is the most common. Here, more than 85% are of this type. Distal fistula. Least common is type B. Okay, approximately 1%. This is the second most common, 8 to 10 percent. Okay, this is around 2 percent. This is around uh, like 5 percent. Okay, so the most common type is distal fistula in which, suppose this is the trachea. The proximal esophagus is blind and the distal one is communicating with the trachea. Okay, so this is type C. So, in these cases, you know, the classical symptoms are there will be, uh, you know, uh, drooling of saliva, abdominal distension because the air can go into the stomach. If you put the Riles tube, you will see that there is coiling of Riles tube in the proximal pouch. Okay, so type C is the commonest type. Identify this IV line, pink color is 20 gauge. 20 gauge is pink color. 16 is gray, 18 is green, okay, 20 is pink, what else, 22 is blue. Okay, ideally in the shock patient, in the trauma patient, this is the ideal IV line and this is the minimum. Okay, if I tell you the flow rate also in, in uh, as uh, from these uh, IV lines, the maximum flow rate I mean. Okay, so maximum flow rate from gray is 180, green is 90, pink is 60, this is around 36 ml per minute. Okay, this is in ml per minute, ml per minute. Okay, so that was uh, option C, 20 gaze. Next question, a 45-year-old male suffers a moderate closed hand injury and brought to the resuscitation with GCS of 10. GCS 10 is moderate, 13 to 15 is mild, 9 to 12 is moderate and 8 or less than 8 is severe. Which of the following measures will not be useful in maintaining cerebral perfusion and oxygen delivery? Means which of these will not be used to decrease the ICP? 15 degree head up tilt is true. This is, yes, it is required. Mechanical ventilation maintaining low to normal level of CO2. CO2 should be kept normal or slight hyperventilation causing little bit washout. PCO2 should be between 32 to 35. Manitol is a hypertonic fluid that helps in decreasing the intracranial pressure. Steroid have no role in the traumatic cases. In the traumatic cases, steroids are not used. You can use steroid in uh, if there is brain edema because of uh, tumor or because of infection, then you can use but not in the trauma. Okay, so steroids are the answer. 
Sixty year old man presents to the emergency with sudden onset severe tearing type of chest pain radiating to his back. Okay, very classical uh, type of dissection symptoms, aortic dissection. CT reveals aortic dissection distal to the left subclavian artery and involving the proximal abdominal aorta. Okay, so suppose this is this is that arc of aorta. This is the left subclavian. So they are saying distal to the left subclavian artery means this area. Okay, so if this goes up to the thoracic aorta only, it is 3A. And if it goes up to the abdominal aorta, like in this case, it is 3B. So this is actually a 3B type, so DBAK is type 3. DBAK is type 1 is one is when dissection starts in the ascending iota and goes into the descending iota. That is one. And two is when the dissection starts in the ascending iota and goes up to the origin of major vessel. That is two. This is very typically DBAK3. DBAK1 and 2 is actually Stanford A. Okay, so the answer here is D DBAK type 3. 30 year old lady referred to uh, with the lump in her neck, firm lump in the anterior triangle which moves with the deglutition. Which of the following structure is responsible for this upward movement on swallowing? Barry's ligament. Okay, Barry's ligament is that this is attached to the thyroid and posteriorly it is attached to the trachea and the larynx. So during deglutition this larynx or trachea moves upward so that's why this also moves upward. Pyramidal lobe is nothing, it is just present at the kind of a remnant of the uh, thyroglossal duct and uh, that is just an anatomical variation. Ligament of treats is uh, present in the at the duodeno jejunal junction and it helps in uh, fixing that part to the you know abdomen. So here the answer did I tell you the answer here in that question is Barry's ligament. 35 year old male, uh, the patient is kindly, uh, I mean around underweight only and because of this dysphagia probably, barium picture is given below, which investigation would be required. Okay, so can you see the barium picture, there is smooth tapering and the distal part, this is a very classical bird beak appearance or the rat tail appearance and this is seen in achalasia cardia. Okay, so this is ecclesia cardia. So if it is ecclesia cardia, which is a motility disorder, ecclesia cardia, which is a motility disorder, you should <coughs> do the manometry. The investigation of choice should be manometry. So manometry, so you have to do to see the pressure in the lower part of the esophagus will be high. There will be loss of primary peristalsis and upper GI endoscopy you should do to see if that if there is any malignant changes happening in it. So option number B is the correct answer. Which of the following scoring system is used for wound infection? It is Southampton score. Southampton score is used for the surgical site infection. Ranges from 0 to 5. SIRS is used for the sepsis patient. Okay, the patients who are in sepsis. Four things we'll see here, uh, the tachycardia, the temperature, TLC count and the respiratory rate. ASA score is American Society of Anesthesiology score. Okay, this is uh, the anesthesia people they see. This is also from 1 to 5, uh, if I'm not wrong. Glasgow score is, there are two types of Glasgow score. One is Glasgow comma score and one is Glasgow severity score in the acute pancreatitis. Okay, so if we see this is Glasgow Suppose coma score for the trauma, then we'll see eye opening, verbal response and motor response ranges from 3 to 15. Okay, so Southampton score is the score for the wound infection. True or false about prostate cancer? It commonly arises from the central zone. Prostate cancer arises from the peripheral zone. Okay, so this is wrong. 
histological grading by gleason score that is correct okay there are gleason grade and gleason score grade is from 1 to 5 score is from 2 to 10 that is correct most common type of prostate cancer is not squamous cell it is adenocarcinoma it is hormone dependent definitely it is testosterone dependent so option number 2 and 4 are correct let's see b true and 4 true oh, option number a b true and d true okay if a child with acute scrotal pain and swelling where testicular torsion is highly suspected how would you proceed okay so if you are suspecting a testicular torsion you should do the surgery as early as possible within six hours surgery should be done so you can save that testis if you wait for long duration more duration then by the time you will open it up the testis will go into gangrene so that's why you are not dependent on the uh, you know the radiological confirmation if you think clinically it looks like a torsion there is it is a very wise decision to open up the scrotum and see what is happening so when you open up the uh, patient uh, suppose there is torsion so you will do the detorsion and then you fix it to the scrotal wall on that side as well as you have to fix the other side also because whatever was the reason to make this twist that the same reason can cause the contralateral testis to twist also so you have to do orchidopexy on both the side immediate scrotal exploration and uh, both the side immediate scrotal exploration on both the side you have to do the fixation of the other side as well identify this instrument which is shown in the image okay so this is a monopolar diathermy there are two buttons one button is for coagulation and the another button is for cutting bipolar will be like this there will be a prong okay so the current will pass from here to here harmonic scalpel and liga show these are the advanced uh, technologies like harmonic scalpel is based on the ultrasonic technology and liga show is a advanced bipolar technology okay so these uh, things harmonic and liga show can cut and seal the vessel at the same time this is a very classical monopolar diathermy okay so this can the things can be done very fast with this but the problem is there is lateral spread of the heat and it can cause injury to the laterally if there is any uh, important structure in the near vicinity so that's why people if they use it i mean they don't use it at the areas where there is major neurovascular structures in the surrounding like in thyroid surgery in parotid surgery we don't use this it can be used to open up the abdomen it can be used for doing the dissection in the MRM surgeries so there you can use this when you know that the surrounding there is no important thing which might get the heat and it might get damaged which of the following tumor marker is not paired with the appropriate malignancy CA 199 pancreatic cancer is correct calcitonin is medullary thyroid cancer not papillary CA 15-3 breast cancer correct alpha fetoprotein hepatocellular as well as non somanomatous germ cell tumor okay so option number b is absolutely incorrect in the medullary thyroid cancer calcitonin and cea are the two important tumor markers which are seen what year old man presents to the neck lump clinic with a prominent solitary thyroid nodule the fine needle aspiration cytology performed shows features of benign adenomatous hyperplasia he undergoes a thyroid lobectomy and histology of the surgical specimen confirms a diagnosis of follicular carcinoma which of the following is characteristic of follicular carcinoma they are saying which of the following is characteristic feature of a follicular carcinoma so it arises from the parafollicular cells from the parafollicular cells usually arises the medullary thyroid cancer usually the medullary thyroid cancer is arising from there medullary thyroid cancer okay, so from parafollicular cells medullary thyroid carcinoma arises not uh, follicular fine needle aspiration can sufficiently differentiate that is also wrong fine needle uh, cannot differentiate a follicular adenoma from carcinoma majority of such cases are multifocal multifocal is mainly papillary thyroid cancer 
metastasis tends to occur via blood stream to bone and other remote site that is the true statement okay so this is the true statement in question number 13 about the follicular carcinoma of thyroid which of the following is not a criteria for diagnosis sirs temperature more than 38 less than 36 that is true okay either hyper or hypothermia blood pressure is not seen in sirs heart rate more than 90 respiratory rate more than 20 or pco2 less than 32 heart rate is not seen okay so these are the three things apart from this the fourth thing is tlc that is either less than 4000 more than 12000 or more than 10 percent precursor or the band forms so these are the four things seen systolic blood pressure is not a part of sirs systolic blood pressure will see in another type of sepsis score that is q so far score in the q so far score we'll see the systolic blood pressure we'll see the respiratory rate and we'll see the mental status which cancer is being operated here so let me see okay so you can see gallbladder distal stomach head and neck of pancreas the whole duodenum and proximal jejunum this is removed this is whipple surgery whipple surgery or pancreatic or duodenectomy which is done for carcinoma head of pancreas this is carcinoma head of pancreas whipple surgery for carcinoma gallbladder we'll do extended cholecystectomy for cholangiocarcinoma we'll remove a part of the liver along with the cbd for cancer stomach we'll do radical gastrectomy we don't have to remove any pancreas in stomach cancer Next question, a uh, 63 year old lady undergoes parathyroidectomy and uh, there is a right inferior parathyroid adenoma which was removed. She complains of hoarseness in her voice which she did not experience prior to the operation. So during the thyroid or the parathyroid surgery, after the surgery there are, I mean during the surgery there are chances of nerve injuries. Two nerves which are very closely related to the thyroid, one is external laryngeal nerve, the injury of that will lead to the you know loss of pitch or tone of the voice recurrent laryngeal nerve if it occurs if it damage on one side that will lead to hoarseness of voice if it damages on both the side then it will cause airway obstruction because the vocal cords will come in the midline okay so option number b is correct 56 year old male uh, presents with sweating headache constipation itchy lesion over on the back bp is high Pulse rate is also high. Urinary catecholamines, metanephrine, and VMA are elevated. Okay, so this is means few. CT scan few. There is medullary thyroid cancer also. So few chromocytoma, medullary thyroid cancer. This is multiple endocrine neoplasia. Two. So it can be either two A or two B. Now, what else is given here? Itchy lesions over the back. Itchy lesions over the back is seen in cutaneous lichen amyloidosis. Cutaneous lichen amyloidosis. And that is seen in MEN 2A. Okay, MEN 2. In MEN 2B, usually there is a mucosal and GI neuroma. There is marfanoid habitus. So, how to differentiate in this case? Just one, uh, you can say hint, although this question is a bit difficult. Cutaneous lichen amyloidosis. Okay, cutaneous lichen amyloidosis is a feature of MEN 2A. Okay, so it is MEN 2A. Although MEN 2B is also not in the option, so that is also becomes the answer. Which of the following statement concerning pathologies of the breast is correct? A breast cyst is considered abrasion of the normal development and involution. That's, this is true. This is abrasion during the involution of the lobule. This is breast cyst. Early menopause is a risk factor for development of breast cancer. This is false. It is late menopause. Early menarche and late menopause. Invasive ductal cancer accounts for less than. Invasive ductal cancer is more than 80% of the breast cancer. The nipple areola complex is spared while undertaking simple mastectomy. In simple mastectomy, you remove the whole breast and the skin over the breast and the nipple areola complex as well. 
So the only true statement is breast cyst is a type of ND, aberration in normal development and involution. Which of the following statement regarding subclavian steel syndrome is true? Subclavian steel syndrome is when there is obstruction to the first part of subclavian artery. Okay, there is some occlusion to the first part. Now because of this, suppose this is the vertebral artery and this is the axillary artery. So now the blood going to this is less. Normally the flow of blood goes to the vertebral artery like this and axillary like this. But because of increased demand in this because of some heavy work by this arm, now there will be a reversal of flow in the ipsilateral vertebral artery. Okay, so the option number one. Reversal of flow in the epsilateral vertebral artery, that is a true statement. So, because of this, now the vertebral artery takes the blood uh, via basilar artery to the circle of villus. So, the blood, blood supply decreases and the patient can have, uh, you know, uh, giddiness and lightheadedness kind of symptoms there. 30 year old patient hit by a bull present with uh, this thing and uh, there was pain, obstipation, initially stabilized, but now there is increased pain. Radiology is done and very clearly you can see that there is gas under diaphragm on the right side. So this is a hollow viscous perforation. Okay, although the question was a big, but the moment you look at the x-ray, it is a very, very obvious hollow viscous perforation. 45-year-old female, uh, 3 centimeter lump and uh, hard mass, right upper quadrant, palpable axillary lymph nodes are also there. Okay, so 3 centimeter, what is the most appropriate next step? So you have done the history and examination part. The next thing comes is the radiological investigation because she is 45 year old, so you should go for mammography. And after that, the third thing is core needle biopsy. So that is your triple assessment, history, clinical examination 1, then radiology, depending on the age, more than 40, mammogram, less than 40 ultrasound. And third thing, the biopsy, which is core needle biopsy, is the best kind. The optimal ratio between suture and wound length that is associated with lower rate of incisional hernia is you should take the suture at least four times as the length of the, you know, suppose you are doing a continuous type of closure. And this is the length of the tissue, suppose four. So when you are doing this suturing, your suture length should be 4x, 4 times the length of the tissue which you are suturing. So, this is the question on that, 4 is 2. The ideal intra-abdominal pressure during laparoscopy, 10 to 15 millimeter. Okay, if it is less than 10, then the space created inside is less. Okay, you will find difficulty in looking up the, I mean the space is less, so it will cause difficulty in visualizing the things and other instrument maneuvering and all. More than 15, the pressure is high, so it can cause abdominal compartment. So 10 to 15, on an average, 12 is the ideal intra-abdominal pressure. And the most common gas used is carbon dioxide. 65-year-old male without any medical comorbidity and scrotal swelling. You can see there is a necrosis of this scrotal skin. Very, very typical. This is Fournier's gangrene. Fournier's gangrene. Testicular torsion, you will not see any problem on the testicular skin. There will be pain, tenderness, redness might be seen. If there is torsion of appendix of testis, then on the testicular skin, you will see a blue dot sign. Orchitis, again, the skin remains fine. Carcinoma scrotum will have a growth. Okay, It will have a growth, a proliferative cauliflower type of growth. This is very typical. is necrotizing infection of the perineum and the scrotal wall that can also involve the penile skin, four nerves gangrene. True statement regarding infantile hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. Remember, it is no more considered as congenital condition. It is acquired infantile. So, in this case, see, there is hypertrophy of the circular muscle at the pylorus. So, now the child will have vomiting, but you can see the bile duct is opening in the second part. So, this will be a non-bilious vomiting. So, this is wrong. This presence with bilious vomiting is wrong. Now, when the food is not going, you will see the peristalsis from left to right. Okay, From left to right, you will see the peristalsis. 
olive shaped lump in the epigastrium can be seen because of this okay hypochloremic hypokalemic it is not hyper it is hypokalemic metabolic alkalosis with paradoxical aciduria okay so the only correct statement here is c treatment is ramstad pyloromyotomy you can easily diagnose it with the ultrasound that will show thickening of the pyloric area and lengthening of that pyloric area on the fifth post op day after cholecystectomy there was some bile leak collection in the morrison pouch what is the investigation of choice if there is any bile leak post operatively investigation of choice is mrcp get the mrcp to see that what is the area there there is a classification for uh, this uh, bile uh, bile leak or the biliary injury known as strasberg classification ERCP these days is mainly a uh, uh, therapeutic modality rather than uh, diagnostic. HEDA although is a very good uh, you know scan and it can also be used in this particular scenario. But uh, because of the availability of HEDA is not wide and uh, cost is also factor, it is not very commonly done. CT will not add much benefit. CT will tell you that there is some collection in that area, but it will not be able to tell. that from exactly which point that bile is leaking so mrcp is the investigation of choice according to european hernia society m3 abdominal wall hernia is see european hernia society if you see there is suppose if we start num pubic symphysis this is the midline hernia okay umbilicus so 3 cm below 3 cm above and 3 cm below and above this can be divided into m1 to m5 okay this is m1 this is m2 this is m3 m4 m5 so m3 abdominal wall hernia is this area that is umbilical this is umbilical okay this one is infra umbilical this one is supra pubic this is sub xiphi sternum and this is epigastric okay so this is m3 so very typical site umbilical hernia <coughs> sorry there are lateral hernias also l1 to l4 <coughs> okay sub costal is l1 this flank area is l2 iliac fossa is l3 and this one is lumbar l4 lateral to the anterior axillary line 24 year old male brought to the emergency following road traffic accident heart rate is 100 respiratory rate 24 x ray is given which of the following is contraindicated if you can see the right side appears fine the left side there is some structure which is having air fluid level so this is a intra abdominal content going into the thorax so this is diaphragmatic injury okay remember diaphragmatic injury is more common on the left side you always have to do surgery in these cases and what you should not do do not put a icd your icd might hit the you know abdominal content so icd should not be done no icd next question 50 year old male and uh, hematuria bladder transitional cell carcinoma which is limited to mucosa okay so it is a non invasive bladder tumor which is the ideal management you will do turvt transurethral resection of mass and after that you need to give intravesical chemotherapy or immunotherapy depending on the histological finding if it is a low grade tumor you can give chemo high grade may you need to give immunotherapy the transurethral resection of mass is the treatment because it is limited to mucosa if it goes beyond mucosa then in those cases you have to do a radical cystectomy and after radical cystectomy you need to do reconstruction of uh, the bladder using the ileal loops The last question identify the image given below so you can see in below the umbilicus this is the umbilicus the anterior abdominal wall is absent and you can see the bladder is on the surface and also the anterior wall of bladder is also absent so what you can see here is the posterior wall of the bladder with the 
If you see closely, uh, there will be ureteric opening with which you can see the dribbling of the urine. Very, very classical ectopia vesicae or extrophy of the bladder. Ectopia vesicae or extrophy of the bladder. Okay, so these were the questions. Thank you very much and a very good luck for your exam. I am very sure and uh, I know I have taught you people. I know you will do extremely well in your exam. Okay, so all the best. God bless you all.